the spider curl. I got asked, why is it called a spider curl? And all I could think of was Spider-Man and whoosh, shooting webs out of my wrists. But really, the spider curl is one of my favorite bicep curl variations. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to set up for it, maybe some technique points on it, and then how I'm using it in this particular session in a superset fashion, which I think you would really find enjoyable. So go ahead and give us a like if this is the type of content that you like to see, getting tips on how to perform movements correctly and implement them in your training. To set up for the spider curl, find an incline bench. You're gonna want something probably in the 45 to 60 degree angle we're using a 60 degree incline for today's session. For the spider curl, you're gonna lay down on the bench in a prone position, that's face down. Now what I like to do in my setup is I like to keep my legs straight. I'm basically anchoring my feet on the floor. I'm standing up, leaning into the bench at that 60 degree incline. I don't sit on the actual bench. If I were to sit on the bench, I would be a little bit too low and my face would be right into the bench in a very awkward position. The second issue that would come up with sitting down and leaning into the bench is that as I extend the dumbbells down, my dumbbells, my hands might actually come into contact with my knees and I don't want that. So straight body position, legs straight, anchored into the floor, leaned in at a 60 degree incline and the chest, just the chest is supported by the bench with the neck and the head kind of off or the face off the bench looking straight forward. Now holding on to two dumbbells, you're gonna let your arms hang down completely straight. You can begin with the dumbbells in a neutral position, which is when your hands are facing each other. You can also begin with your hands in a supinated position. That's when your palms are faced away from you. As you curl up, the end position is with supinated palms or palms up to the ceiling. One technique point that I like to encourage people to think about is as you curl up, think about driving your pinkies up to the ceiling. So if we start with that neutral grip position at the bottom and we flex the elbow and rotate that pinky up to the sky or supinate, we're hitting two of the actions of the bicep. For this particular version of the curl, I like to keep most of the focus on elbow flexion, not on raising the upper arm and including shoulder movement. Now, the bicep does cross the shoulder joint, so when I lift the upper arm, there is some bicep activity going on there, but it's not the focus for me in this particular drill. So I like to not allow my shoulder to move or the upper arm to move up. I simply like to flex the elbow and supinate the hand and drive that pinky up to the sky. Now you know how to perform the spider curl correctly. You know the right setup position. Here's how we use it in today's training session. This was performed as a superset with narrow grip, slightly supinated, strict pull-ups. I chose a hand position on my strict pull-up that was narrow and slightly supinated to target a bit more bicep contraction. We used a little bit of band assistance on this particular pull-up and we performed a maximum repetition set. For me, that was anywhere between 10 to 15 reps where I got full chin over the bar. At the final rep, I would come down, get out of the band, walk over to the inclined bench and set up immediately for a spider curl. Coming off of the fatigue from the pull-up, my biceps were already a little bit tired. I grabbed moderate to light dumbbells, performed that neutral grip to supinated grip technique for 10 to 20 reps, aiming for that higher rep count. And then if I was hitting 20 reps, then I could know that on the next set, maybe I could go up to a heavier dumbbell. We did three supersets of this. Pull up, max rep, right into spider curl, and then follow that with about a two minute rest before starting again. Have you used spider curls in your own training? Comment below. Have you tried a superset variation like this one? Comment below. Tell me how you use these in your training. And don't forget, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so that I can get you more training tips to improve your training experience as they come out. We'll see you next time.